What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today we got a first time reaction to Dog Fashion Disco and their album, Adultery, brought to us by our friend, longtime supporter through live streams, and first time patron, River. Thank you, River. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you got support in any way, check out the Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. Now, River brought one of their songs on a live stream a couple weeks ago. So I have heard one song. I don't remember if it's off this album or not, but I'll give you a little background on this and then Rivers got a background on this. Dog Fashion Disco is an American heavy metal band from Rockville, Maryland that was originally active from 1995 to 2007 before disbanding. They officially reunited in October of 2013. They have 14 studio albums, although some are re-recordings. We'll cover that in a minute. One live album, two EPs. On April 4, 2006, they released their sixth album, this one, Adultery, which featured the return of original drummer John Ensminger. On December 5th, 2006, I'm going to take you back here a little bit and we'll understand where we were in social media, right? Todd Smith posted a blog entry on Dog Fashion Disco's official MySpace stating that the band had decided to call it quits. We did everything through MySpace back in the day, boys and girls. On d October 10th, 2013, a status app update via the Polkadot Cadaver Facebook page confirmed that Dog Fashion Disco is officially back together as a band. The band members themselves decided their collective influences being Mike Patton, of course, Mr. Bungle, and more famously, Faith No More, Clutch, Tool, System of a Down, and Frank Zappa. Rivers, adding a little more, said a bit about the band. Todd Smith is their lead singer, and they, along with the rest of the band, own the label Razor to Wrist Records, where they release all their music and have a few other artists sign. Their former label, Rotten Records, held their music in a similar fashion to Taylor Swift, which is going on right now as I'm recording this, oddly enough, and have slowly clawed back the rights to those albums, such as Anarchist of Good Taste and the first few Polka Dot Cadaver, record records through re-recordings which is what taylor swift has been doing for the last couple years right now up until very recently much of their music wasn't on streaming outside of what they'd re-recorded a little bit about this album in itself it's a concept album uh, the last album to release by the band before their disillusion in 2007 loosely follows the story of a private detective so just keep that in mind after the band's deal with artemis ended drummer mike ali oliver left the band this left todd smith and jason step to write most of the album on their own Without a drummer. By chance, they asked former member, I mentioned this earlier, John Ensminger, to show up to drum for them. Then he then became the drummer on the album, completing the lineup. The music on the adultery is still credited to every member of the band as each member had their own input, specifically Matt Ripto, whose name is listed on the album cover with the rest of the band. Todd explains this is making up for leaving him off the credits of their last album, committed to a bright future. So you know, there's not any research out there on any of these songs. You know, I, I'm the research guy on everything we do on this channel. I looked everywhere. So we're just going to let these songs speak for themselves. The music will not be in the video, but it will be at a Vimeo link below. So follow along with us. We're going to start off with a very short album opener. The Uninvited Guest, only about a minute and a half long. I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, River. All right, just some nice keyboard work there in Todd's kind of ominous lyrics, kind of building an atmosphere. Who got into your soul? Who's that voice in your head? Who put that look in your eyes? the uninvited guest, right? And they just let this thing kind of breathe a little while with not much vocal. So I'm sure that's going to, uh, the next song and, and the rest are going to build into that. So we got The Sacrifice of Miss Rose Covington. All right, The Sacrifice of Miss Rose Covington. A lot going on in that one. I'm not a huge fan of scream metal, but uh, Todd make it, made it work. And, you know, he went in between. Like, we built us in with some fantastic drumming from John right at the start. The guitar work by Jason in there. Is fantastic. I know Todd's on guitars too, um, but you know the vocal performance was nice. And basically, the end of the world is here. You know, uh, it's it's all over. With. We're all going to die. She's going to hang from the cross, um, burning alive and hanging from the cross. Oh, hi, you look so pretty now. The sacrifice for all humanity, smoke and ash. I'm choking on you. So, yeah, some pretty heavy lyrics. The power of Christ compels you. Demons be driven. So, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's, like I said, just real real heavy. Miss Rose got sacrificed, but. The whole world is ending. Next up, we got Silent Film. So let's see how we uh, segue to this next track. All right, Silent Film. You know, if there is really that theme of concept of following a private investigator, I mean, I, I see it look like at the beginning, it sounded, you know, they kind of had the music, the build-in of, of what you would get, you know, in like a 40s or 50s detective movie, 1940s, 1950s detective movie, and then they come in. And, you know, once again, Todd does such a good job of varying up his voice. The guitar work on there was... Uh, was fantastic. Some of these songs sound like a little bit of uh, of Metallica light, but as far as what the song's about, you know, I think this girl just has all these lives to live. You know, she's in the in the silent movie. There's all these things going on. You know, circling spirits loom over the autopsy center since Satan's failed to communicate 
unforgiving eyes, confessions caught on tape, wish me luck, I'm going in, never to return. And this is your eye flashing before your eyes. All the riddles and rhymes echo in your mind, it looks like. The joke is on you. So kind of just going on and telling. But then the silent movie ends. And it says, your good girl will set you free. I'm just kidding. None of it's true. None of it's true from this lonely padded cell to the crowded gates of hell. So they definitely have some nice writing on here as well. Next up, we have Sweet Insanity. All right, Sweet Insanity. My favorite song so far because, you know, Todd's singing harder and then he comes in and the melody kicks in, right? When he gets dream like amazing, it just kind of keeps keeps going for a while. Then he goes back to a little bit harder, but you know, his voice sounds really, really good here. The melody sounds nice. The guitar works fantastic. Their, uh, their musicianship is really, really good. Um, I don't really know what the song is exactly about. Um, and he wants to go away with this girl. And, you know, it's got the the darkish type tones throughout it, like the rest of the album. But uh, Dream Like a Maze, Dream Like a Maze, My Sweet Insanity, If You Would Take Me With You On Your Trip to the Moon. So, you know, maybe in his own mind, he's trying to escape. I guess this one's, this one's a little more hardcore. I don't know, maybe not, but by the title, Desert Grave. I remember I mentioned it during the reaction. Obviously, Desert Grave, I, I judged the title. I should not have done that, right? Because it's an ominous song, almost a country song. Change up at the end that could have been something that uh, the Pink Floyd did with the vocal, a little bit of a vocal effect there with Todd. Um, just, a, just a fantastic song, man. Shows their diversity, right? Todd's playing the banjo on there. He's got all kinds of stuff going on in here, but very low key. It's all about the story, right? They tried to get away, but Todd's Todd's burying the the... The sins of man in that desert grave, they're never going to find him, right? And even at the end, like I said, like we have almost this false ending with like a minute left, and then we switch into that. Just even a little bit of difference and change up there. It's a really good song. Like I said, shows their musicianship skills. Next up, we have the longest track on here. We've got Moonlight City Drive. Here come the cops, but they're not gonna catch they're not gonna catch them. When you go on that Moonlight City Drive, it was what I thought it would be, right? You go on that Moonlight City Drive and you're not going to live through it. But what I like about dog fashion just goes. Like they don't even settle on a style and a song oftentimes, right? This thing goes goes everywhere. We got the horns. We got those nice backing vocals kind of coming in. Moonlight City, drive nice and soft. And then Todd's coming in harder at times, but at times he dials it back. So it tells a really good story. Basically, I mean, in my mind, they're driving him out to the desert, right? And there's a lady of the night and you're not really going to make it. And kind of just tells that story. And, you know, they're kind of in a seedy part of town talking about everybody who's out there. So uh, well told and uh, very diverse musically. Next up, we're going to push into the concept of the album, Private Eye. All right, Private Eye. To say this album is incredibly dark would be the understatement uh, of the day or the, or the week for me. Um, it's it's a very, very dark album. And this song tells the story of the Private Eye. It's very uh, creative, right? Because he's singing and he speaks it out and sets the scene of these people. You know, it's infidelity, this guy, and it turns out as a prostitute. Or so you just think it's somebody he's having an affair with but then i don't you know i don't pay you for that and so you just kind of have the act you hear the act and at the end he he shoots her man so uh yeah i mean another diverse song now we go to the darkest days all right the darkest days uh it's a lot of death on this album right so he says, these are the darkest days it comes as no surprise all hope will someday die as we sink like stones in the river so long so far gone my wild eyed child it's been so long and you're so far gone Someday I'll find you when I die. Someday when I die. So once again, the melody is is great. Right? Todd sounds great whenever he's singing the chorus, right? So uh, it just paints this picture. Like They do a very good job of painting the picture. I can see this apocalyptic almost scene that he is painting. So really well done. And speaking of death, dead virgins don't sing. Oh boy, what are we going to have here? Okay, dead virgins don't sing. Definitely different than any song on here. Really good writing. I mean, just very, very creative. It, it's about Jesus Christ, right? Eat for this is my body, raise your glass and toast for this is my blood and I am the pathway. So communion, um, follow me down, we're in the void. I'm the face of you for your salvation lives only through me. And then all, oh, look what we have done with eyes wide open, look what we have done. And then all these different things. So I don't know, I, I try to look it up. I see they have a thing, a song called the Christian dance song from 1996. The dog fashion disco did. I don't know if they're Christian in belief or they are mocking the belief. I, I just don't know. I am a Christian, um, a strong Christian. I don't know necessarily why well, I don't align with what most churches do in the country I'm in, in the United States. It's all about money and power. But uh, a lot of people who are anti-God are because they either 
They've never read the Bible for themselves, and they're going on secondhand knowledge. And what so-called Christians say, which most of those so-called Christians are not, if they're spewing hatred, or they grew up in a oppressive religious environment where that is also not uh, what the Bible is about. So I don't know. If you've never read the Bible, go read it and judge it for yourself. But uh, very creative. Like, this album is not heavy metal. And, and I know they, they're influenced by all these different genres. There's heavy metal in it. But this thing is just, it's it's genreless, right? It's genreless. Now we go to The Hitchhiker. I don't want to be cliche, but it's probably going to turn out well for This Hitchhiker. All right, The Hitchhiker. One of the things on this album, it's not it's not mixed very well, right? A lot of the songs bleed into the start of the next song, but that's neither here nor there, but that one did that. Whatever, well, The Hitchhiker is pretty much what I thought. Picked him up on the road, put the music on, kind of you know, brought him in like, it's going to be all right. And then he's staring down the barrel of his gun and he kills him, right? I'm the one you're looking for. The killer so uh yeah i mean exactly what i thought it would be and once again diversity in the song all right todd goes all in and screaming at times but then we dial it back just all kinds of different instrumentation and interesting stuff in there three songs left we got 100 suicides all right 100 suicides once again stands out for being diverse right the horns come in there and we dial it way back kind of the harmony vocals in there are nice as well even when we go in a little bit harder on there and it becomes very catchy right even a song this diverse becomes very catchy. Two songs left. We got the title track next. Adultery. All right, man. Another one of those songs that, I mean, the, the chorus was great, right? Some harmony and some call and response there. As this song just kind of unfolded the story. I think at first he was, you know, using the phone, a uh, little phone sex. And then it might have turned real and it might not have. Because maybe he's just viewing that as the adultery and the sin. I don't know. But as it unfolded and as he, he got more uh, consumed by it, which is which is what happens in human nature, right? But, uh, you know, the bass work of Brian White uh, got to come into play, especially at the start of this. And a couple songs ago, it was in there heavy and fantastic. So I just want to throw him a shout out because I've thrown John a shout out, Jason Stepp on the guitar and keys. And of course, Todd, man, who, you know, played the banjo on one of the songs earlier. So let's go to the final track, which I would say describes this entire album, right? Mature audiences only. All right, mature audience is only a good way to, to finish this. A, a very diverse arrangement again because, you know, Todd's voice is mixed to the back, so you can't really understand, but I got the lyrics that I'm, I'm watching. Like, you can understand him at times, but, you know, almost a, a classical arrangement in there building the drama. He's basically talking about, you know, somebody's asking what lives inside, you know, I don't know, he comes out every once in a while and he basically tracks down this prostitute and kills her. And so it kind of uh, finishes out the album that, uh, you know, kind of just keeps with the theme that's going to bring me to my favorite tracks honorable mention i got moonlight city drive i like the diversity of that song but i mean some of these songs were diverse and private eye for the creativity in it you know with the spoken and the sung part uh fave sweet insanity desert grave and adultery man so now we get to my overall score this album is is you know it's so diverse right and i mean i can see the concept of following the private eye because i guess he's following maybe he's investigating all of these crimes you know i I'm just picturing this city and uh, kind of out near the desert to drive out there and, and where these different things happen. That That's what I'm picturing. Man. So the writing is really, really good. It's really, really dark. I'm not usually drawn to really, really dark stuff. I mean, this is not an album I'll probably go back and revisit, but I definitely appreciate it for what it is for the diversity and the ability and the musicianship is fantastic. I was Todd on the vocals and he's also on guitar. Like I said, played the banjo. Jason Stepp on guitar, cello which comes in on a few songs and keyboards. Jeff Siegel on the keyboards, Brian White on the bass, John Ensminger on the drums. And then you also had some additional trombone, trumpet, sax, flute, clarinet, and horn, right? So we go from what seems like almost a speed metal on, on one of the first tracks into just, you know, almost a country vibe uh, in, on, on a couple's on a song. And then you're just everywhere on this thing. So it's really hard to describe. And that's, that's a good thing. So Overall score for me is going to be an 8 out of 10 just based on that diversity. Thank you to River for bringing this one. Let me know what you think of this album down below. And Like I said, they have several albums. I know some of them are re-recordings, but uh, let me know what else I should check out from Dog Fashion Disco. And Until next time, guys, I will see you.